Hello. Today we are going to learn how to make a hotspot quiz inside the Quizzes Next platform in Canvas. So typically you would start by clicking on this button right here, the plus uh, quiz slash test button. But today uh, I already have a quiz set up that I'm going to go to, but this is how you'd normally start. Um, but for, like I said, for today's demonstration, I already have a, a quiz, quiz and quiz question kind of already set up in here. Um, and actually, I'm going to delete this question and show you how to start at the very beginning. So you can see this is a hotspot question. Uh, I can put some instructions in here, which I've already done. I would just click here and add my instructions. And then I would go here to click on and add a new question. So in this case, I'm going to choose a hotspot question and click on that. You can add a question title. In this case, it's going to be mapping. And the question stem is required. This The title is optional, the stem is required. The stem is ultimately what the question is that you're actually wanting to ask the students to do. Uh, so I'm going to say click on the Sahara Desert for the purposes of this question. And then I'm going to add a map in here in just a sec. Okay. One tip before creating hotspot questions or hotspot quizzes, what I would advise you to do is get all of your images saved first, put them in a folder that's really easy to access, like on your desktop or something like that, and then try to create your, your quiz questions. And the reason for that is it'll just save you some time uh, because these images have to be saved. They cannot be just copy and pasted uh, into Canvas. They have to be saved first and then Kind of, kind of almost like downloaded in, but or uploaded in rather. So I'm going to click on this browse button. You can see that I this is a folder that's saved on my desktop, and I have a bunch of Canvas images here. This is where I save all of my images. I'm going to go ahead and click on this world map. It's a world physical map. That way the students can actually uh, have an idea or or have a place to uh, select where the Sahara Desert is. I'm going to go through these three different options with you. This first one, as you can see, if I hover over it with the mouse, is a square. So if I'm okay with that, depending on what the image is, um, it basically, you can see I can, I basically left click and then uh, drag my mouse and I created this rectangle. But you can see I could click in the Atlantic Ocean or over here in the Mediterranean or the Red Sea or even in Saudi Arabia and still get the correct answer. So the square is not necessarily maybe a good tool uh, for mapping, but if depending on what you were trying to have the students select, maybe the square would be a good tool. You can also use the oval. That's why I just click on the oval. The key with the oval is you, it's almost easiest to start at the upper left hand corner and then just kind of drag and uh, left click with your mouse and drag. You can see that one didn't turn out very good, so I'm going to start a little bit higher and, and click and drag. Now, this one's not too bad. Um, but I still have a little bit of the Atlantic Ocean and some of the Mediterranean Sea, and I also have some of the Niger River Basin uh, that students could click in and, and technically get the right answer. So maybe I don't want to use that either. Um, so now I'm going to click on the polygon, and this literally lets you outline. I'm going to zoom in here just a little bit. This literally lets you outline images very, very specifically. So I'm going to left click to kind of get started and kind of get it going there. And you can see how it's starting to draw that little line. And each mouse click now after that point, it kind of starts to shade in that blue square, which is the area uh, that I want students to be able to select to get the correct answer. And you can see how much more specific I can be with this than I could the other way. So you can see that's outlined pretty close. The other thing too, notice how this drags, like it's still kind of hanging out there. You just kind of quickly move your mouse off the page. I'm going to go ahead and zoom back out again. Okay, and before you leave this question, you'll want to go down and hit done, and that essentially saves this particular question. As you can see here, uh, now when the students go, they won't see this shaded blue box like you see on the teacher version. When the students go, if they click anywhere inside of this area that I shaded in blue, the canvas will automatically grade it, and, and uh, if they click in that area, it'll be seen as a correct answer. In order to leave this particular um, page in Canvas, I go up here to the upper right hand corner and I hit return. And I'm actually going to show you what this looks like in student view and, and what it'll look like in speed grader. So I'm going to go ahead and go over to home so I can get to student view. There's student view right here. You can see I got the purple bar across the bottom. Um, it says nothing for now. So I'm going to reset this. 
Okay, so now here's my quiz that shows up. So I'm gonna to go to test hotspot so I can actually take this quiz. The reason why it wasn't showing up before is I had already taken this quiz as a test student. So I just reset it. Um, click on begin. It'll just pull up my one question. It'll take just a minute because it is pulling up an image. So here, let me pull up here in just a moment. And here it is. Okay, notice in the directions it says click on the Sahara Desert. I'm gonna go down. Hmm, let's see where is it at. How about right about there? Okay, so notice I kind of put it pretty close, right, to the edge. I'm going to go ahead and hit submit. It's going to say, are you really sure you want to submit this? And I do, so I'm going to hit submit again. This will be what the student would have to do. It'll auto-grade it. Uh, notice it says I got that correct, so I must have been close enough. So notice it'll give you the exact point inside of that, that line, and it also shows the student, let's say that they missed it. Let's say that I would have put that over here. It would, it would show me where the correct answer was, and, and that's a setting you can choose, and it'll also show them where they actually marked it. Let's say that you did want to go back and review, because the student was like, I put it put it on the Sarah Doug. Let's say they're right down here, maybe really, really close, and you're like, okay, I guess I want to give them credit. Okay, so let me go ahead and leave student view here for just a minute, and I'll show you how you can look at this in SpeedGrader. One of the quirky things about quizzes.next is sometimes it's a little bit kind of hard to get back to where you want to go. So the easiest way to find these quizzes in SpeedGrader is to go to your gradebook, which you just click on your grades tab over here on the, the left hand side. That particular quiz here is clear at the end. It's one of the most recent quizzes I have and these are a lot of fake assignments that I've used over the years. So I apologize for that. But anyway, if I hover over this test hotspot, uh, there's this little drop down arrow. So I click here, click on speed grader. This is gonna take me through my class roster and I know that test student is at the very end. So I'm gonna go ahead and click there. Okay, notice it shows me the correct answer. It shows me exactly uh, where, where it was that the test student placed that. And it says in this case it was correct, okay. If I wanted to, I could regrade this if I chose, or I could manually override that score, and that's where I would go to do that. In this case, I don't want to. I already have the correct answer. I can come in here and leave some comments if I want. Um, and then if I wanted to submit this onto my gradebook, I can leave it as is or hit submit. And it, depending on if this is hooked up to the SIS system or not, it would push this grade um, to the SIS system. One other thing I would like to show you real fast too, Notice that it says five out of five here, okay, but this was only worth one point. So it says I did get one point. This is kind of another, it also says five out of five here as well. Uh, this is kind of another one of the quirky things in quizzes.next. Um, if I click on this, it'll take me back to the build section where I would want to build this assignment, okay? And I can't really change the point value of the overall quiz here. You can see that this question is worth one point. If I hit edit, I can go, I can, and now it's saying some kids have already taken, so I have to edit a copy, which is what you would do normally. I can change the point value of this one question here, so I can make this worth five points. But let's say that I ended up with more questions than what I originally thought. The way I would have to address that is to go to return. I have to go back to assignments and find it on my assignment list. Okay, so it's down here towards the bottom. I have to hit edit here. And this is where I would go to change the points. Okay, so if I just want to make it worth one point, I'm going to come there, choose one, hit save. Now it's worth one point. Okay, you can see that it changed it there. So I can't do that in the actual quiz. I have to come out here and do that uh, in the assignments edit. Um, button which are these three little dots in assignments so that's just kind of one of the quirky things about quizzes next uh, quizzes.next that's that sometimes a little bit frustrating but uh, i guess once you get used to it that would be something that is um, like i said it'll kind of be second nature to you as well